Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Bison Post Game Show, brought to you by Gate City Bank. North Dakota State is off to Frisco, Texas for a 10th time after a 35-32 win over Incarnate Word. Recapping it with Mike McFeely, Eric Peterson, Jeff Kolpak. I'm Dom Izzo. We've seen some interesting semifinal games, yeah. ones that have been boat races, some that have been dandies. Six years ago to the day, James Madison came in here and beat North Dakota State, and Early on in this game, at about 6.45, it seemed like UIW was going to boat race the Bison here. They almost blew him out of the yeah. building, talking about the Bison. We saw in Lindsey Scott Jr., the best player in FCS yeah. this year. There's no question about it. The way he could, you know, damage a defense with his legs, his arm, and 30 of 46 passing. The guy... Every time he had the ball, you just felt like he was going to do something with it. Yeah. It, was just, it was just dynamic. And he did do something with the yeah. ball. The tune of Incarnate Word, Big E runs 94 plays. 539 yards of offense. Madden said on Monday they can have all the yards as well. we got to keep them out of the end zone. The Bison did that in the final two drives of the game. Uh, and I think NDSU's defense played pretty yeah. well. I think that shows you how good Incarnate yes. Word's defense is, especially after the 16 nothing. But you had NDSU created four turnovers. Dawson Weber, a senior, six-year senior, came through in the back end when NDSU needed it. They made a play. I thought they tackled relatively well, but Lindsey Scott, Marcus Cooper, running back. Oh, Valley man. Sabres, that was just the dynamic offense. And the middle part of the game, NDSU's defense put some speed bumps, just enough speed uh -huh. bumps to keep them in the game. And then it was just a back and forth shootout there. Not even a shootout, just a bunch of like huge blows <laughs> back and yes. forth in the right. final 30 minutes. Mike, if I would have told you those stats and then the Bison complete one pass for five yards, what do you think the final score of this well, game is going to be? I, I'm somebody that counted the Bison out <laughs> when it was 16 to three. And I thought that Incarnate Word scored another touchdown. Yeah. And I have spent my night getting roasted on the <laughs> Twitter platform, which is fine. Yeah. Thank you, old takes exposed. Thank you for all the text messages, friends and family. I appreciate it. At that point, it looked like the Bison were just dead yeah. in the water. Uh, that touchdown got overturned. Lindsey Scott then fumbled yes. the ensuing snap on fourth and one. And from there, NDSU just scratched their way back into the game. And it was not pretty all the time. It was not the most conventional way for to win a game. And as you said, uh, Cam Miller went one for 12 for five <laughs> yards. But... He did rush for over 100 yards. Yeah. Kobe Johnson rushed for over 100 yards. The Bison defense created four turnovers. The Bison did not turn the ball over, nope. although Incarnate Word and many people watching on TV would argue with that. Yeah. Uh, it was just a wild game that had bits and pieces of Coastal Carolina, Georgia Southern, uh, James, James Madison. Madison yeah. just, all kind of, just a nutty game. I, I, and I think the one thing that NDSU's defense did relatively well, I think Grimes uh, caught a 40-yarder that set up a touchdown, but it Incarnate Word didn't get behind him too much. No. It was everything in front. And I, I think that's maybe what ends up creating turnovers. Yeah. When you run 94 plays, there might be an errant throw or something in there. And I think that's what NDSU, they, they made, there was not the 70-yard touchdown. No, and that's and the 65-yard touchdown in Incarnate Word. Like we saw and last week against And that's State. what, I think if you talk to other coaches in the league, in the, in the Valley, they'll tell you that that one thing that you have to be against NDSU is patient because they will they will give you five yards. They'll give you 15 yards. But if you try to take something too much, yeah. and it happened a couple times tonight, yep. it sometimes turns into an interception, and, and they just don't let guys get behind them, like and, Eric and said. I think Incarnate Word was patient for most of it. The one to Doss, his first pick was one where yeah. I think they tried to hit the deep shot. I thought the last one was not. They didn't yeah. need it he that time, that. right? I didn't no. think. I thought that was too early. It was, early. First, it was a first down, first and ten. He had all the time in the world yeah. to throw, and he just heaved it up. And like Dawson Weber said after the game, that I felt like the ball's in the air for 30 <laughs> minutes, and he's right. Yeah. There's just no need to no. throw that. I mean, there's a minute 33. Lindsey Scott's probably made They just need to get in field goal range, though. But, but he's made that throw yeah. probably a lot of times, yeah. and he's thinking – I mean, it was a great interception. I think he's thinking, my guy's going to go get it, or it's going to knock yeah. it loose. And Dawson Weber – I mean, that – how many – Defensive backs drop that. I mean, the defender, I mean, the offensive player did a great job. playing defense. Um, Weber, I don't know what his vertical is, but it's pretty good. It's not, it's not, it's not Destin Talbert like, but, but, but it's pretty good. But, I mean, this was like a heavyweight fight, to yep. use the cliche. Is I mean, it was, yep. you stop and think about all the things that happened in this game. Uh, G.J. Kinney went for it on fourth and four instead of kicking a field yep. goal to tie. Talk about that. Which, that yep. would have made it 35-35. There's just so many different – NDSU got a two-point conversion in yes, the corner of the end zone pass. on a tipped trick play <laughs> that we've never seen before. It's and somehow play, that landed yeah. into yeah. Joe Stuffel's hands. And, I mean, just a million things happened where you go, then, wow. Then after the fourth down stop, Cam Miller and TK Marshall have huge runs. It yep. looks like NDSU is going to close the game out. 
then they then get they stuffed. Get stuffed. Yeah. But, yep. and he, yeah, Miller missed a but, wide but, open uh, stuff. Uh, another Ooh. key thing that happened, I think, was Caden Steindorf had some nice punts. Really good night. On that last drive, you pin Incarnate Word at the at the three yard line. Yeah. Yep. I know it's Lindsey Scott, but 97 yeah, yards gives still you a little way bit to of go. error because Incarnate Word completing some passes of the 33. If that drive starts at yeah. the 25, it's a whole different ball game. So that drive starting at the three was just huge. Dawson Weber, Colpac came up big all season long. Three forced fumbles, two fumble recoveries, now five interceptions. Just it's been a month. He's been the playmaker that buys in defense all season. Yeah, Chalk went up to another COVID nineteen yeah. extra year six of year eligibility. Guy. He used a six year of eligibility. Him and Tutsi were just fantastic mm -hmm. today. Tutsi had what eleven tackles or something like that, and just was uh, those guys are. I mean, they are your quintessential veterans yeah. in the back end you know they just they're they're always in the right spot they make plays you don't have to coach them so much yeah. their coaches and, out there and i think especially on ndsu's defense more bodies were the glue guys the two safeties spencer wagey yeah. showed up especially early on with this pass rush the problem was i don't know how you attack lindsey scott in the pocket because if you rush too too right, quick, he goes. Get up, he, he takes off. He's out yeah. the gate on the other end. Yeah, they could. But, they but, but they if, couldn't speed rush but him. But if you do the controlled rush, he sits back there and picks you apart. So it, it's it's a hard. But, but they to but pick. they but they did enough in the second quarter. They they sacked him a couple yeah. of times just to slow things down and get Little the road, game back under control. There. It just yeah. felt like Incarnate Word was playing a thousand miles an hour, and then he was going whoa. Yeah. yeah, the, yeah. And, and just it just they just sort of settled things down in the second quarter, and, and then took the lead at halftime. The fact they led at halftime was amazing. Yes. Like, we're yeah. going. What did we're we all just see? Going, Wait a second! Wasn't <laughs> it just about to be twenty-four to three, yeah. and now it's seventeen sixteen? And then NDSU takes its opening drive of the scores. Yes, yep. twenty-four to sixteen. Then you're like, okay, NDSU's figured it out. They're up eight. They got their ground game going, yep. and then then Incarnate Word <laughs> just storms back. The one thing I want to to, to make a note of is with twelve thousand five hundred fans, like per capita, this might be the loudest. It was really loud. Yep. Like. They, there was a factor, and I've like at the end of the first half, I've just never seen that. And yeah, felt running, sold out, running yeah. to the yep. locker room after wages, you know, yeah, yeah. jacking yep. on the fans, and the fans are going crazy. So it, it was a great atmosphere, great play by both teams, probably exactly what you want to see in an FCS semifinal. And now, three weeks before the game in Frisco, Texas, and an extra day because the game is on Sunday. and Mike, that means we could have a whole litany of Bison players come back. Oh. There were two guys that got left this game in Will Mostar and Loshaka Rokes. You imagine they can come back on top of Luke Wirtz, on top of Tameric Williams, on top of Raja Nelson. And we haven't even got to Big Eli Foot. Mostar Big, yet. Big Foot. We, 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 we see Foot. him uh, potentially it, in Frisco. This is, um, you know, I think we said from the start of the year that boy, just the defense maybe for NDSU wasn't quite what it was early in the year. And there seemed to be something missing. They kept getting penalties and, and mistakes. We kind of thought, ah, maybe this just isn't the year. And then the injuries started building yeah. up. And I've never seen a team with this many injuries survive this long, which yeah. either which either goes to just great depth that NDSU has, great coaching. I think co great coaching. Let, let, let's yeah. throw it out there. Yeah. And also, I, I don't want to diminish Incarnate Word or, or Samford or Montana because they're good clubs, but it just – Somebody's got to knock NDSU off when you have 15 guys on the sidelines yeah, I, and, I, and I, nobody can do yeah. it. I don't it's think, incredible. I don't – it was less – I mean, it was a good volume, but it was not only the volume. Like, it was who it, it was. The, was. It was the quality. Right. Yeah. I mean, All-Americans and starters. Noah Kendall. Kendall. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Your right tackle, Mason Miller. Hunter Lipke. Lipke who yeah. Be their best offensive player. Gindorf, Will Mozart, Jake Kava, I mean, and, and, and other guys. So, it's – I don't know. It's – they found a way, I guess. And now we wait the game tomorrow between Montana State and South Dakota State. I asked Cam Miller. They know each of these teams awfully well. That's just really intriguing to see who's going to win this game in Brookings tomorrow. Yeah, I'm sure that, I mean, they're not going to say if they're – I don't know if you'd want one or the yeah. other. The, uh, South Dakota State has NDSU's number. They have. Montana State's playing really well. I, I mean, they're tough to stop. So um, you know, you know, the team you really don't want to see in Frisco is San Diego State because yeah. that's, <laughs> that's an FBS team, and they're they're really good. I guess, go ESPN. I guess ESPN yeah, has them going to Frisco. They I mean, still can't figure out no, after how many no, years in Division One, fifteen now. years into yeah. this, they still can't figure it out. Is there a team they would prefer to see? I'll ask you guys as well. They know them both well. They have not. The Jacks have not beaten NDSU in the postseason. That caveat no, is still out there. Um, there's there's reasons that they'd want to play each, and and you're never going to get anybody to say it. I. You still, I still go back to the idea that NDSU is averaging 370 yards a game yeah. rushing <laughs> in its last 
six playoff games against Big Sky teams starting in 2018. I'll have to see tomorrow if this Montana yeah. State defense is different. Mm -hmm. um, but if San, if San Diego State, <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't do that on purpose. If South Dakota State can run the ball, then you'll go well. It's it's a typical yeah. yep. Big Sky front. But we'll, it's just gonna be miserable conditions. Right. Well, it's just awful. And here's the thing. If NDSU's had a hard time getting their run game on track the last couple weeks, if it's South Dakota State, who probably knows NDSU's yep. run game, but like the back of their hand, South Dakota State would have three weeks. But then you look at Montana State, they might be playing as well as any team in the country mm -hmm. right now. And they have Tommy Malott, who he probably doesn't throw the ball quite as well as Lindsey Scott Jr., but as a he runner, runs he's it. probably yeah. right in that ballpark. And NDSU had a little trouble stopping, yeah. stopping the quarterback run game. And the... Um, and Marcus Cooper had a big game. No so doubt. He's really good. Fonze, Fonze, Fonze yeah. back. So, yeah. I mean, and Isaiah I, I think, Davis there for South I don't, Dakota I don't, State. I think it's six I think one it's, half, doesn't the other. But, but, but I, again, I still go back to the, is Montana State any different up yeah. front? And maybe they are. I yeah. haven't watched them enough we'll to find say out. it. I'm asking the question. I'm not putting out bulletin board material. I'm not saying the game's over. <laughs> it's a rhetorical question. It's a rhetorical <laughs> question. Rhetorical. Thank you. Very rhetorical. For San Diego State. But the Bison are still playing, and they're heading to Frisco, and so are we for coverage in three weeks' time as North Dakota State heading back to the Lone Star State for a tenth time. For Mike McFeely, Eric Peterson, Jeff Kolpak, I'm Dom Izzo. That's the Bison Post Game Show brought to you by Gate City Bank.